can donate is greatly appreciated, and we do thank you very much for your donation. So for the second hour, and we're going to have to do more of this, guys, <laughs> uh, we're, we're coming back with Gordon James Gianninato and his, um, I guess his wife, his partner, Janet Louise Stanley, and uh, of course, so uh, our new our new person joining this panel is a researcher, Anunnaki researcher, planet ex, uh, expert, who was uh, was a former attorney, just like uh, his name Gordon, is. And his name is Glenn Bogue. So, uh, Glenn, welcome to the show for the second hour. We're going to do a little roundtable panel discussion. Hi, can you, you hear us? You. Yes, I can. Thank you, Janet, and hello, Gordon. I'm also a contractor as well as a lawyer. Wow. Hi, Glenn. Well, they both came in handy because the legal background gave me the ability to research independently of other people's opinions. And when you're a builder and begin to look at things like the Great Pyramid and how these things are constructed, you quickly understand that um, normal human beings can't do these things. Yeah, exactly. And I, I was always fascinated with all these ancient mysteries, you know. It's like I have a pith helmet, and sometimes I put it on, and I'm, like, walking around going, yeah, I'm exploring the unexplored. Get ready. <laughs> so welcome, everybody, back to our show. Um, so there's so much to cover, and it's obvious we're not going to get through it in this next hour. But I'd like to focus. What would you like to focus on, Sasha? Let's have you come forth with where we need to take this. Well, let's look at the whole thing of uh, the extraterrestrial presence uh, on this planet and how they have uh, reacted to the uh, astronomical crises that we periodically go through and uh, what kind of help. I know that uh, uh, Gordon is going to give us a positive uh, scenario, not just a junk one. (laughs) Exactly. This is exciting. This is probably the single most exciting time and place you could ever hope to be in in the history of the universe, because this will be the first time that a whole planet with life on it goes from one dimension to another. So this has attracted the interest of ETs from all over the universe, and this is like a school. And what it is 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 there are civilizations that never had a single thing change or be different for 10,000 years, 100,000 years, or God knows what. And there are problems from all over the universe. And although when you live in a body, you might not be willing to solve them, um, on a soul level, People volunteered to come from all the problems in the universe and be born here on Earth on both sides of every issue. And I know it seems like nothing good is happening, or if there is anything good, it's very rare. Um, but you, what you have is is you have about a third of the Earth has made a conscious choice to organize all their intentions and their behavior around being unselfish. And those people have resolved every single problem in the universe. So... What we have to look forward to is is there's a new hybrid race that's going to be the, the human race. We're all going to, when we die, we'll have a choice to be reborn into these new hybrid bodies, to live hundreds of years, to have a very high telepathic IQ, to be loving, sexual, um, romantic, everything that you feel that is good about human nature now. And we're going to build a fleet of spaceships, and in about a 1,000 years, the Earth will be known as the home of the explorer race. We're going to go out to every single planet in the solar system, and, and not the solar system, in the galaxies, plural galaxies. And we're going to go to all these civilizations, and we're going to show up, and they're going to tell us our problems, and we're going to click our fingers and go, that's nothing. This is what you do about that. And uh, we're going to be like a blessing to the whole universe. So that's why there are probably more extraterrestrials, unselfish ones, around the Earth right now than there are humans. And you might find that hard to believe, but that's the interest. And that's why, one by one, everybody has been contacted individually. The government said no leaning on the White House lawn, no introducing the truth to everybody. Instead... Uh, they decided, okay, fine, we'll just contact everybody according to their ability to handle it. And so Janet and I have been contacted consciously because we've always, on our own and together, talked about it. But uh, other people who can't handle it, you know, it's like uh, some sort of a dream that they can't really put together. But when 
pull shift happens, you're going to remember what you were told, and that will help you make decisions about what your choices are and what you should do about them. So I think this is a very exciting time, and I can't imagine, because look, if you're an eternal soul, how many times have you already died and been reborn? It's like grains of sand on an endless beach. So, um, you know, yeah, you're going to die no matter how you look at it. But uh, to be alive at this time, which is a real turning point and something that's going to be important to the whole universe, wow. Well, I, I want uh, to address the issue. Now, the hybrids, aren't, aren't we already hybrids, according to the story of the Anunnaki? But uh, aren't we hybrids many times over? We're part of uh, even the Anunnaki. We have a reptilian brain. There apparently was something going on with that level of hybridization. Uh, does anybody want to contribute uh, to what do you mean by hybrids? Is it is it just the grays? To me, the grays are weak. Are we going to go into a weaker species? Uh, anyway, I'm just putting that on the table. Talking about hybrids, who are they? The, the Anunnaki, the grays, reptilians, who and what are they? Well, my work, Janet, uh, goes into the assertion that um, – that Enki, the scientist that came here initially, uh, and Jesus Christ are the same person. Uh, the imagery comes through Egypt and through um, the Oracle of Zeus at Dodona. And he was the father of mankind in that Sitchin said that he had um, fornicated with the daughters of Eve. And at that point, we raised a homo sapiens sapiens. So I agree with you that, the, that the, we are already hybrid. We have the cells inside of us. Uh, the energy around the earth now, as Gordon has said, is really spectacular. Many, many, many souls are lined up billions long now trying to get on the planet as fast as they can for, for this wild ride we're going to go on. But once you free up your mind to, 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 to educate yourself in the history of the Anunnaki, that they are here, um, only three days ago, uh, two events happened in my life. I began to channel uh, a, a great horde or host of, of these beings that came through in one voice. And Janet will go over that maybe this week when we speak, but this has just happened. And um, I began to see uh, in people's past lives who they were, uh, how they died, and their scars are beginning to appear on their body in ways that uh, they have not noticed before. And so when you first have this ability to do that, you go, well, it's just, you know, Gordon and Glenn, we're just like, we're lawyers and we're contractors. We're, we're bricks and mortar people. But once you open your mind to these things and the capacity of the human beings to conduct themselves this way and to be contacted this way, it's a little bit disturbing at the first, but I tell you, it's endlessly interesting. And, and that's what I find, that open, inviting contact, but then you've got to be prepared because... They start contacting you. <laughs> well, like attracts like. You know, like attracts like. So let's say if you're a very selfish person and you're calling the unselfish, why would they have anything to do with you? And if you're uh, a very unselfish person and the selfish people are going to, the selfish ETs are going to leave you alone because they know they can't get anywhere with you. So it, it's just a natural thing that like attracts like and things group together. And uh, that's why you really don't have to have a fear of this contact. They cannot contact you consciously unless you give a call, and what you're basically doing is giving permission. And um, I had had many, many experiences as a child before 1968 when I was uh, 20 years old, and I decided to teach myself telepathy. But um, I had had many experiences, but I just didn't know what to do with them. But then when I started actually doing that and pursuing the ancient wisdom and things like that, and, you know, there are whole societies and civilizations that have evolved to the point, just like Glenn said, where they exist as a single thought in space. They can project themselves, the entire group can project themselves as one person on a saucer and land on the earth if they wanted to. But um, so, you know... What I always say is that imagine that you're the creator and you haven't created anything yet, but you could do anything. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, wow, I already am all of this. How could I take my own next step? And I think that's how the universe came about is the creator said, what if I divided myself into trillions of pieces, created a universe to send each piece out, forgetting they were part of the creator, and then they could 
uh, on their own through many lifetimes and many experiences, first as minerals, then as plants, as animals, and then as humans, and then beyond, they could gradually evolve back to the point where they know as much as I do now as the creator. And then we get all of these pieces back together again. And then I will have taken myself to my own next step. And that's what I think is going on. So I think we all came from the same place. We're going back to the same place. But there are those who are much further along than us who have stopped to help their brothers and sisters. And it always makes sense that the the person that's at the next level helps the level behind them. And and so as the levels go up, there's and as more and more people reach that level, there's going to be more and more people to help the rest of the way. But, the, you know, there are there are definitely beings that could just merge back with the creator now, but they don't because they're thinking, you know, um, well, it's a, it's a thought of like um, the golden rule, doing to others as you would have them do unto you. If you think, oh, as long as I can hurt somebody and nobody knows and I can get away with it, I'm ahead. Well, no, you're not ahead because really that other person is part of you. You're part of them. So when you hurt them, you're hurting yourself. And selfish people have blocked the empathy. It's not that they don't have it. They've intentionally blocked it to keep that thought from coming. So these are all these issues that are coming up. So it's not just an apocalypse. It's not just Planet X. It's not just ET contact, but it's really going somewhere. This is coming to a point. And like Janet says, it, it's a graduation. The bus is running. Are you going to be on it or not? Sasha has a question. Uh, no, I don't have a question. Uh, just that from my perspective, the way uh, one good way to extend empathy is to look at what you uh, bugs you in others, what you can't stand, or what you overly admire in others uh, that you think people that you think are not like you, and to go within and see what's resonating within you, and see what needs that part resonates. So if somebody's angry and hostile, and even violent, you can say and you can't stand that, you can say, well, angry part of me, um, I'm not in touch with you, but um, maybe I can be. What angry part do you really need? And it might say, well, you, uh, you need, I need attention. I need to address certain things. And once you start doing that and feel that everything in the universe, it's a holographic universe and it's everything resonates within you because everything has a, a uh, resonance within you. you, you can see what that part needs. And you, once you become peaceful with that, you can accept others and allow yourself to empathize with them. Every time you do that, you transcend the level of consciousness you're in, and the not-self becomes, ah, uh, that's part of me too. Look in someone's eyes, look deeply, and you'll see the consciousness within them is the same as the consciousness within you. You are one, and you are one with every consciousness in the universe, nice. right back to the creator of all, in my humble exactly. opinion. So. And I, that's what Gordon was saying. I wanted to address the issue, a couple things here I want to cover. We've got about 45 minutes of the Anunnaki and their role in the um, in this uh, planet. And uh, are, are they selfish, unselfish? A little bit into that. And then the Zetas and their role and, and, uh, and then end up with who's contacting us. And are they selfish or service to self or service to others? So let's start, start with the Anunnaki and um Gordon, I'm not sure of your perspective on who the Anunnaki are and their role in the planet. If you can kind of summarize yeah. it, great. Yeah, I, yeah. see, to, to me, they're to me they're uh, they they haven't they're they're not going to be graduating to the fourth dimension. They're going to be behind on the third dimension, and that's because of their selfishness. And they did breed us, um, but they left out some important parts, like the, the having a good pineal gland. Uh, most people or many people have that atrophied and they have no, that's the part of which you recognize that you're an eternal soul. And if you don't have that, and then the Anunnaki did that because they could call themselves God. And then you would think, well, geez, they are God. But you, you would, if you had the working, a uh, complete seven chakras and the seven glands working. So we were intentionally made defective. If you had them working, then you would know that they're, they're the same as us and no one of them is any better than any one of us so they in intentionally created us now the zetas they they have said described their history quite plainly and they said that they were like us and they destroyed their planet and they they had already achieved space travel and a lot of science and they said well what's wrong with this picture and they made a very bad decision they said well we should never be allowed to have a planet again 
And then we should never, we should clone ourselves so that we can be space traveling beings where we don't have to have sex. So we can use DNA to take sex out of our lives. Then we can take emotions out of our lives and we'll just create these huge telepathic brains and we'll be in touch with each other. So when you look at one Zeta, you're thinking they're all the same. They might even be parts of a hive or something, but they're not. And so one Zeta might be interested in music, another might be interested in history, another might be interested in science. But whatever any one of them knows, the other can access. Well, all that was...